Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for another tutorial in Melinda's Rubber Room. I'm Melinda Pierce and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here today to show you how to make this quick and easy card. This uh, card was one that I did during one of my recent Zoom sessions and I'm just now getting around to doing the uh, video tutorial. Um, I took a little bit of a break from my stamp studio during Easter so I'm so happy to be back with you and to share with you. So. Um, this is a, like I said, this is a really quick and easy card to do. So I'm going to spend a little time on the basics. Um, I realize that some of you are new to stamping and a lot of times um, we kind of skip over some of the things that we take for granted. So hopefully I'll um, address some of those things in this tutorial and you'll learn a little something new. Okay, so I'm going to point you down to my work surface so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Make sure you're nice and straight and in my work surface. So like I said, this was the card that I did during my Zoom session. Um, these are a couple other samples that I did. So you can use any um, designer series paper, double-sided paper that you have. Um, it actually doesn't need to be double-sided um, for this top layer here. And then you just want to find an embellishment to put down in the corner and a greeting. And then I also, um, wrapped the ribbon around and tied a bow. So I will go through all of those steps with you. And I usually have my cardstock all cut um, and ready to go. But like I said, this is a really quick video. So I am going to start from scratch, starting with a thick piece of Whisper White or basic white cardstock from Stampin' Up. And I'm just going to put it in my trimmer. So this paper measures eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to measure halfway across the 11 side, 11 inch side to five and a half and cut my paper with the uh, darker of the two blades. So the darker one is your cutting blade and the gray, the uh, lighter one is your scoring blade. Okay, so that is my half sheet of cardstock. I'm going to turn it around so this is the eight and a half inch side across the top. I'm going to measure halfway across, which is four and a quarter. And I'm going to score that with the lighter of the two blades. Okay, so now I have my score line. So the indent is on the top. You want to go ahead and fold your card with the indent, um, with the indentation on the top. So that gives you a nice clean score line. If uh, you need to double check to make sure that your score line is exactly in the half, in, in, on the, right, exactly in half, you might want to just check your the ends of your cardstock and make sure they're all lined up. If everything looks good, you're good to go. If there's a little bit of a difference, just go ahead and manually move that and then take your bone folder and go right across the score line to reinforce that. Okay, so on this card, we have a mat, which is the blue. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the mat. So my mats are typically a quarter inch smaller than the piece underneath it. So we measured five and a half earlier. So now we're going to go five and a quarter. And then we measured four and a quarter before. So now we're going to cut at four. So that will give you a nice little margin going all the way around your card. And then we have another piece of white cardstock. Um, and that is going to measure, again, a quarter inch smaller. So we had five and a half, five and a quarter last time. So now we're going to measure at uh, five. And we had four inches earlier, so now we're going to go three and three quarters. So again, that gives you a nice margin going all the way across. Okay, so now we are going to bring in our uh, designer series paper. So this paper is actually, the starting size is actually the same size as this white mat. So that's this one here. So again, that was five inches. And 
three and three quarters. So that is now going to sit right on top, exactly the same size as that white piece. Okay, so now to get this diagonal cut, we want to just put it in our cutter and we're going to line, line this up in our cutting channel here. So on this sample, um, you can see that the diagonal does not go all the way down to the corner. It's about an inch and a half maybe inside. So we can kind of see it poking out there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this corner in my cutting channel and then I'm going to move this over so that it's about an inch, inch and a half from this corner. There's no right or wrong measurement there. It's just however much um, white space you want underneath to show. Okay, so that is that piece there. And that's going to get put onto the card just like that. Now save this cutoff piece because you can use that on the inside of your card like that for a decoration. So that kind of ties the front to the inside of your card. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and do some assembly here. So I'm going to take my Tombow glue. You can use any adhesive that you want. And I'm just going to lay some glue down here. Let's see if it comes out better on the other side. I was just using this one yesterday and it was cooperating pretty good. So you don't need a whole lot of Tombow glue. It goes a long way. I just kind of dot it on or if the other end is working well for me, I'll just put a fine line down. So I am just matching up my edges here. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead and mount this onto my mat as well. Now I am going to put a ribbon around this. So I don't want to attach this to the base of my card just yet. That's a common issue that people have. They end up attaching things too early and then they forget that they want to put a ribbon around. Okay, so my art margins are pretty even all the way around, so I'm just attaching that down. Okay, so now I'm going to take my ribbon. So the this mat here is called Misty Moonlight. That's the name of the color. And I'm using the corresponding Misty Moonlight ribbon. And all of my products are from Stampin' Up. If you would like to purchase any of them, you can do so at my online store at www dot melinda pierce dot stampin up dot net and that information is right here for your reference and i need to just grab some tape really quick i had cleaned up my stamp studio for easter because we were going to be using it so all of my supplies were tucked away. So I have to gradually get everything back out again. But it was nice to have a nice clean space this morning when I came in here. See how it ends up when I get done today. Okay, so there's my ribbon going across. And then I'm just going to tie a little bow. So I like attaching the bows on top of my card after I've already wrapped my ribbon around. Um, I just find that I can make a much nicer bow if it's not attached to my card. Okay, so then I'm just going to snip those little ends. And I'm going to use a mini glue dot. So these are tiny little dots that have adhesive on both sides. And I'm just going to take my little bow 
and bring it right to the glue dot like so and then lift the glue dot off so now the glue dot is sitting right on that bow and i'm just going to put it right down onto my card now those little glue dots they are stronger than you would think with just a little glue on them so um they will be strong enough to hold that ribbon down okay so now that i have my ribbon on my card i can go ahead and glue this down as i mentioned in the beginning this card was one that i had done on a recent zoom session i do have zoom classes um, I offer two of them on Wednesday and one on Saturday and all of the information is on my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Melinda's Rubber Room and again that information is right up here like so okay all right, so I am um, the paper that I used here is one that is going to be retiring. It's called um, Flowers for Every Season. It's a beautiful set of paper. It is actually one of my favorites um, from the catalog this year. And all of the paper that I used on all of these cards are from that same uh, paper pack. Uh, so it's a six by six paper pack, um, and it is on sale with a at a really good price. So um, if you go to my online store, you can check out all of the items that are retiring and uh, pick up some really good deals. Assuming uh, the paper is still available. I haven't checked it recently, but uh, when those papers sell out, they are gone for good. So I'm just going to put this right on the inside. Again, this was the paper that I cut off from the front. All right, so I am actually going to use some different stamp sets, uh, a different stamp set than what I used in the past. My other ones were using the Butterfly, uh, or the um, Butterfly Gala, I believe, and the um, Dragonfly set. So today I'm actually using Welcome, Welcoming Window. This is a really pretty little set that's in the um, current mini Stampin' Up! catalog, and it will be carrying over. So you get all these, with the bundle, you get all these cute little stamps and you get all of the coordinating dies. So it's a fun little set. I had kind of overlooked it in the catalog, in the mini catalog at first, um, but it's definitely worth going back and checking out. Okay, so this is the first time I'm using it. So I'm going to see how this stamps. Sometimes you have to prime your stamps a little bit, um, which just means stamping them a couple of times, especially the photopolymer ones. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a seal or something on there that doesn't like to accept the ink. So you just have to stamp it a few times. Okay, so I am going to stamp this, but I want the flowers to go over it. So I'm just trying to find my placement. I think that looks about right. And then I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to stamp my little flowers. So again, the ink that I used was um, the Misty Moonlight for the little watering can. And now I'm using the Just Jade. Um, this, both of those colors are new in colors. Um, and they are actually the same colors as what are in the paper itself. So a lot of times what I do is I take the colors that are noted on the back of the paper pack and use those same colors in my design. And that way I know everything is coordinating. It's one of the best things about Stampin' Up! is that um, their colors are coordinated so that you can get the same ink in the paper and the ribbon. So everything matches perfectly. Okay, so now I'm taking the yellow flowers that go into these little spaces here and I'm just going to hopefully get those lined up.
Apparently I can't talk and think at the same time. Okay, so that didn't work. That didn't line up perfectly. So I'm going to go back and stamp it again. And just have it a little bit, have it have a few more flowers than what um, is in those little openings. So as long as you get color in there, it just looks like more flowers. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp my little greeting. And then I'm going to put these through the stamp and emboss machine and get all my stamps out of the way. And I'm going to cut out the thank you with this, these dies here. These are another um, set of dies that I kind of overlooked in the mini catalog. They're called Stitched with Whimsy dies. And they just have some cute little curves to them. Um, it looks like they have some um, stitching on them. So again, this is the first time I'm using them, so we will see how they work together. I'm just going to get a little washi tape to hold these down so they don't move when I put it through the Stampin' Emboss machine. So those um, Stitch with Whimsy dies are also carried over into the new catalog. So that'll be fun being able to show you those sets and dies some more since they are not retiring. Okay, so I'm just going to bring my emboss machine in just going to put my dies right there on top of my acrylic sheet run that through if y'all are looking for a manual cutting machine this machine is really great it um, is just so much easier to um, to turn than the big shot that I had earlier. Okay, so it turns out that the Stitch with Whimsy does not cut out. It just does a little perforation, a little design on the top. So let me see if I can, well, it's too late to incorporate that into my existing card because I already glued everything down. But if I had wanted to, I could stamp this image right here on my white and then run the um, die through and it would have given it a cute little outline. So that is good to know and a fun new way to use the die. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, the die that I cut out on my flowers and I'm going to raise those up with dimensionals which are not here on my workstation. There we go. Okay, so this will just give it a little bit of dimension by raising those flowers up a little bit. And then I think I will just stamp my little Thank you, down here in the corner. There we go. So there is my completed card. I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little something new. I know I certainly did as far as how um, my Stitched with Whimsy dies work. So that was a fun little experiment, and I will have to show you some cards in the future as to how I incorporate that into um, some of my cards. All right, I hope you enjoyed that uh, tutorial, and 
Um, if you would like to join us on our um, on my Zoom sessions, please check out my uh, Facebook page, Melinda's Rubber Room on Facebook. And again, if you'd like to purchase any of the products that I show today or anything else that Stampin' Up! sells, please go to my online store at Melinda Pierce. Um, <laughs> I forgot my store. MelindaPierce.StampinUp.net. Okay, hope you have a great day and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.